We just checked out episode one of Fallout. We're going to tell you what we think. Hey, hey, we just checked out Fallout. Can you believe it? They made an actual show out of this thing. It's a video game adaptation. And those usually don't go so good. But we watched episode one. Caught a little bit of episode two, but we're going to focus on episode one. We're going to give you our reaction and our review. Again, this is Our Reviews Will Kill You. I'm the man you may know as Z, and I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed what you saw here. But let's get into Fallout. Let's talk about it. I'm going to say I liked it, and I know that might be controversial, or it might not. I, I, I don't know at this point anymore. I'm scared to watch anything because it could just be garbage. What's interesting about Fallout is that it's from Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan. Yes, you may know him from such things as being Christopher Nolan's brother, Sir Christopher Nolan, the same guy who brought you the Batman trilogy, but also the same man who brought you Westworld, which is the single most disappointing series in television history because the first season was perhaps one of the greatest artistic seasons i've ever seen in anything like it's up there in like the top five things i've ever watched and then seasons two through four decided to destroy one of the greatest things i've ever seen basically is anthony hopkins uh is amazing it was so good <laughs> and then it was gone because they ruined it they ruined it they took this amazing mystery and they destroyed it so I'm very, I was very concerned that this would be ultra woke and ultra like just nonsensical. But what I've gotten so far has been pleasantly, surprisingly good. And it all starts with Walton Goggins. But here, this is from the AV Club, Fallout premiere, a bloated but promising start to the nuclear apocalypse. I think it was like an hour 15, and they probably could have cut 15 minutes from it. So I'm not going to disagree with William Hughes here. And anybody who tell like, by the time this airs, so this got bumped up an entire day. And it got bumped up, the entire season dropped. So we're going to walk through this slowly. I may be ahead of the curve, but I'm not going to, like, crush the entire show for you. There will be spoilers in this particular review, and I will tell you when. But I, there, anybody who tells you they watched eight hours of this already when it debuted, I'm literally recording this like an hour after it debuted. They are liars. Only the first two episodes were pre-screened, so anybody who tells you they watched the whole thing, they, they're liars. So don't believe them. We're going to go with what I saw, which is, like I said, one episode of episode... I saw episode one and, like, a quarter of episode two. So far, it's good. I'm okay. There's some weird questioning. Like, there's some things I question, but not so much that it takes me out of the show. Uh, and, it, it, the I mean, the sets look phenomenal. Uh... They claim it's a 60-minute premiere. I feel like it was longer than that. I think it was an hour and 15 minutes. And, yeah, there's credits and all sorts of other junk. There's a great 40 minutes of TV to be found in the opening episode. Uh, it could have been a tiny bit tighter. First episode is called The End. And it is this thing just pulls 100% out of the games. Now, I will let you know, I am not the world's biggest Fallout fan. Like, I don't know everything about Fallout. I did play the bejesus out of Fallout 76. I know basically everything you need to know about Fallout 76. Everything else I am not the most familiar with. But I do understand the lore. I do understand the Pip-Boys. There's sugar bombs coming out the wazoo. It's all good. I mean, it's all authentic. It looks great. Everything, uh, you know, I had trouble telling when it was CGI and when it was practical. In fact, there's a super interesting cameo in episode two, which I will not reveal here. Uh, but it is, it's pretty awesome. Uh, the way I described it is it's take the 1950s aesthetic, move it up into the future, and then have an apocalypse, and then move that on 200 years later. What would happen? 
There's a lot of mysteries to discover. I know a lot of it because I'm obviously familiar with the lore, so I will do my best to not ruin the show for you. Uh, but the show starts with Walton Goggins playing Cooper Howard, a washed-up actor, I suppose, who is a, uh, you know, he's a, a he's brought his daughter with him, and he, he's he's like the Ghostbusters at Ghostbusters 2. He's a little washed up. He's taking whatever money he can get so that he can perform. He's doing lasso tricks. I guess he was from some TV show or, or something. Who, who, who knows? But that first scene, while it drags on a tiny bit too long, is absolutely devastating and wild to watch. I thought it was great. You get to see nuclear devastation sweep across the California coast. Absolutely wild. I think it's great. Well, is it great to New California? I mean, I don't know. It does happen across the rest of the country. But from this point out, we're going to talk about the plot. We're going to talk about spoilers. I'm going to tell you what I liked. And um, I don't know. I'm going to tell you what I didn't like. We'll see. We'll see. So far, we're going good. I'm liking it. It's interesting. So uh, once you move on from Walton Goggins, then you go into the vault. And... uh, the Vault's interesting. It's played... The main character, Lucy, is played by Yellow Jackets, which I've never seen. Ella Purnell. I've seen her in other stuff, but she's fine. And uh, she has really big eyes, but she's she's an interesting character. She's in Vault 33. And apparently some of the vaults are connected and interconnected. So there's like a Vault 32. There's a Vault 33. I think technically, without spoiling anything, I think there's 100 vaults. I could be wrong on that, but I know there's a lot of vaults. Her dad is played by Kyle uh, McLaughlin, who you've seen in other things as well. And uh, the int- so <laughs> she has special skills, which I think is, is pretty funny. She can't get a romantic partner because you can't mess around with your cousins because they've all been in this vault for 200 years and they are practically interbreeding. And she straight up says it. She's like, uh, it's not a sustainable long-term sexual practice because, you know. (laughs) So apparently they trade with other vaults where they will trade things and they trade wives. And that's how her father became the overseer of this particular vault. And she's all about it. She's like, I am ready to rock and roll. The girl is prepared. She is absolutely prepared. And then what you find out is that not all is as it seems. Some people suspect things are going off. And essentially, this is the story of Lucy coming to terms with who she really is, what the meaning of, where she is, and what's happened to the outside world after the apocalypse. There's another plot line that talks about the Brotherhood of Steel, which is a fanatical leftover from the U.S. government. And then you have another plot line, a C line, about the Enclave, which is, I'm not going to spoil anything, but its own separate faction. Just imagine if there was a nuclear um, devastation, the U.S. government was prepared for this. So they sent some people into vaults to, to hide and repopulate the Earth, and then... Not everybody died in the nuclear holocaust, and they divide it up into factions. And we get, actually, technically, we get to see four factions because there are raiders as well. Now, again, the series is directed by, so far, I don't know if he if he directed the entire thing, but he at least directed episode one is Jonathan Nolan. He does a bang-up job. I mean, it looks beautiful. Everything is down to the button. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing. Like, it looks great. I was astounded by the sets. All of it just looks so authentic to the game. Clearly, they love the game. They know what's going on. Do I think it's going to go... I I, I don't know where it's going to go, but it's interesting. So far, I'm going to give it... it, You know, you can't judge it based off of one episode, but I highly recommend it. You know, maybe it's like an eight and a half. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's a thing. It's a thing that I recommend. I'm going to keep going with it. I'd love to know what you guys think. If you're a Fallout fan, I would think so far you're in like Flynn on this. You're all over this. Like I said, I I don't want to spoil the entire thing. I'm just going to give you kind of an overview. Maybe we'll get into more discussions if you guys want to about it. Let me know what you think. There's a ton of Easter eggs. I can't even describe all the Easter eggs. It's, It's just out of control. 
And um, there's so much stuff hidden in there. I, I could just go on and on and on. But let me know what you guys think if you watched it. Again, I'm going to recommend this. I'm trying not to spoil it. Uh, I'm going to give you a, as little as I possibly can. We'll discuss further as we go along. We'll get into some more of the details. There's some great cameos showing up in the future. You're going to like those too. So keep going. So far, so good. I heard it got a really good reception from episode one and two, but they magically dropped. They pushed it up an entire day and dropped the entire season. So let's go through this together, you and I. In the meantime, catch our audio podcast on iTunes. You can also catch the live stream of that on 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Friday nights. Come join us. Come join the party. It's a lot of fun. You can join the channel, super chat us, all sorts of good stuff. It's a great time. We've also been having some special guests on. Check those guys out as well. It's going to be great stuff. you got to enjoy it. But in the meantime, i got to go back to my fallout shelter because I am on to the next one.